Much of what we've talked about so far has been about numbers, about how many women and men appear in news stories. But we also need to consider the content, tone and orientation of stories. If we only look at frequency, we might find, for example, that the number of times women politicians appear in the news more or less reflects their number in Parliament, and we could therefore think that the media are being fair to women. But if we undertake a qualitative analysis of story content and find that most of the stories about women are negative, or focus on their style rather than their substance, or question their competence, whereas most of the stories about men are neutral and focus on their politics, then we're likely to form a different view. The majority of studies which do take that more discursive approach to interrogating news stories, including the Global Media Monitoring Project, suggest that there are gender-based differences which cast women in a more negative light than men, particularly when women are acting against the norms of traditional female behaviour, for example, by taking up a so-called male profession or committing violent crime. In thinking about content, I want us to think about stereotypes and how they perpetuate sexist ideas about who we are, what we should look like, and how we should behave. We've already seen that women and men appear in different kinds of news item, speak with different voices, and perform different roles in news stories. Studies which look at particular genres of news, such as politics, sports and entertainment, all show very clearly that in the majority of cases, women and men are framed differently, are described differently and are reported on differently. For example, news stories about women politicians will often include details about their age, domestic arrangements and what they're wearing, none of which are at all relevant to their competence in their role. Stories about men rarely include such personal information. If we consider sports journalism, women's sports generally receive less media visibility than men's sports. Women's achievements are often credited to their coaches, and their bodies, rather than their performance, are the more popular sites of interest and comment. However, there have been a number of campaigns produced by advocacy organisations as well as commercial brands to question these stereotypes using a variety of different techniques. Here's one good example. So far, we've mostly discussed representation in simple binary terms, looking at differences between the categories women and men. But of course, we are always more than our biological sex. We have other identities which define us and by which we are defined by others and they have different meanings and importance depending on context. 
these other identifiers, our race, our ethnicity, our age, our religion, our abilities, our sexual orientation, all contribute to who we are and how we are framed in new stories. Contemporary studies are therefore increasingly focused on how intersectionality works with gender to produce different kinds of gendered news scripts, different kinds of stereotypes which continue to ignore what makes us uniquely ourselves. We consider issues of intersectionality in more depth in another unit, but it's worth signalling here because the journalistic move to the eight-second soundbite or the tweet or the online news headline means that complex ideas are abandoned in favour of attention-grabbing copy, which is simple to frame but does not necessarily lead to understanding. Issues such as discrimination against trans people or gender-neutral toilets or same-sex parenting or hate crimes or LGBTQ rights are mostly discussed in superficial and sensational ways with little context or history. However, some content is more thoughtful in how it deals with complex identities and Damien Kavanagh, controller of BBC Three, suggests that factual programming can explore the experience of difference in ways which complement short-form mainstream news journalism. Let's hear from him now. <laughs> 